morning and Shabbat Shalom. We are coming to you from a wonderful place this normal Shabbat. And many people have been asking me to show more of my pretty face, but they want to ask me about how do I get my knowledge. Well, quite simply, it is from truly reading and diligently studying the scriptures. Now, we've done different locations where we've taught about the tzitzit and the Shema, Hear, O Israel, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Echad, Yahweh is one. Baruch Shem Kevod Bakut HaLelam Va'ed. So, as we bring in this fine Shabbat day, So you can look up a word here in a King James, and then you go to your Strong's Concordance. And in the Strong's Concordance, it has lists 
with numbers. So if we go to the back of the concordance, it's a full concordance and dictionary, but if you go to the back to the Hebrew section, that is the, the Strong's numbers with the H, and that will take you back to the Hebrew, but you must realize that the Hebrew that is used here in the Strong's is the modern Hebrew. That is not the language that Adam, through his sons to Noah, and from his sons through Shem, Ham, and Jephthah, and the blessed line Shem went on, and those writings, the writings of Hanuk and of the original patriarchs were handed down and came in possession of, I believe, Moshe, but even before that, Abraham. And those may have come down through him, through Jethro, the priest of Midian, who was a great-great-grandchild of Abraham through uh, Keturah, his last wife, who kept him warm. So, once we get the word in the Hebrew, Strong's, and we can note that what I do is very diligent note-taking. So in my notes, and they get quite copious, I have word studies and Strong's notes for this was uh, all the different studies and languages. Now, I'm looking at regular dictionaries, dictionaries and encyclopedias that are worldly. And everything is from the world's point of view. And the New World Order, which is not new, is in control, and it always has been. The winners always write the history. And they say, maybe the losers were the losers for a reason. Well, if you control the outcome, and, well, let's get back into the word. We've got all kinds of studies that I have put down the Strong's numbers. Then, we go into the Jeff Benner's ancient lexicon, and we can look up those strong numbers, and we get back to the original Paleolithic writings, where every syllable, which every character, every letter, is a sentence in and of, of itself. So, the language expresses so much more meaning than our modern, watered-down English. So, I, I believe th this, no doubt, is going to be the language after the Messiah returns and restores everything to a fallen kingdom that he will have a remnant of people that take his Shabbat very seriously and diligently study his word. Now, some of the other books that I may recommend is another one from Jeff Benner, and this is the Ancient Hebrew Dictionary. It has a thousand verbs and nouns of the, the Hebrew Bible, so that is kind of a condensed Paleolithic uh, dictionary of about a thousand very important words that match and correspond with this much bigger book. And I recommend them both. Uh, this has a fascinating account of really how the Paleolithic alphabet uh, formed and has changed over the years. Now, put the calendar there. Some of the other teachings that uh, I would recommend 
is any of Teddy Wilson's work of, of Seekers of Yahweh Ministry. The congregation of Yahweh in the, the top of Hell's Canyon, of all places, in Craigmont, Idaho. He is a blessed teacher. Uh, tune into him if you are in the uh, Hell's Canyon area, uh, the, the Clarkston. We have people coming from the other side of the Cascades, uh, al along the other side of, of uh, Mount uh, St. Helens. We have people coming from Boise, from British Columbia. We had people from uh, the uh, coast of California last week. And uh, it's an incredible, very small congregation that Yahweh has blessed them with a building, free and clear. And it is beautiful. Check out the new videos of the, the uh, dedication and of Passover. Back to our books. One author that I recommend and Teddy has uh, really shown me is, is Bradford Scott. Now, Bradford Scott lives in an area that I know very well. It's Vernal, Utah. And I remember of reading his books many years ago. But Brad Scott has an insight as a, as a man that is a scholar. Here comes a big puppy dog. Well, I wasn't on his hunt. Okay, so Brad Scott has written different works that complement any of your studies on the ancient languages. And he really gives a mindset on what is in the, the difference between our Western mentalities as opposed to a Hebraic way of thought. When you have in the English, we are reading from left to right, but in the Hebrew, when you open up a Torah scroll or you're reading the Paleolithic Hebrew, it reads from right to left, right to left. So, some other books that I strongly recommend, purchase and Give them to your friends. The, the one that I, I've studied the scriptures for over 30 years. And this little book changed me and my family's life. And it was opening up this whole system that has totally masqueraded and is a counterfeit. That quite frankly, I never saw. I never knew the scope of the name Yahweh. And I've followed his son, Yeshua, for years. But it's not until I read this book that I've known him as Yahweh Shua. So, this book is Vain Traditions. It is not one of those books that sold, even though it is very costly. And this book has information and scriptures by an unknown author. So, I am familiar with this unknown author, but it really gives you the, the uh, differences between paganism versus the truth. It's an eye-opener, and I highly recommend it. It is called Vain Traditions, and you can get those at the Vain Traditions website. Another book is from uh, C.J. Coster, which is Come Out of Her, My People. And this book is a powerful book that I never knew about, but many of the people that I have met over the years, this is the book that really opened their eyes as this one did for me. So another one that I would recommend from Bradford Scott is The Tares Among the Wheat. This is a, an eye-opener in difference of the cultures.
and Who Are the Wheat, Who Are the Tare, a highly recommended book. Uh, they're the tares among the wheat. So, one of the other books that I use often, and it is the timeline of world history, and it is a very long uh, map that lays out history in a chronological order. And you can see the generations from Adam all the way to Noah and through to Abraham and then through all of the different nations and the time that the Messiah came. It's, it's an incredible publication that is from, it, it, the research is excellent, but when you look at it, every single name is changed into the English and it's almost comical to watch me look at this because I am correcting the names back into the Hebrew and arguing with it even though those timeline, the chronologies are pretty darn good. However, there may be about three to four hundred years that are somewhere else. Uh, we'll go into that at another time. Another book that uh, is worldly, it's from uh, Broadman Holmes Publishing, and this is a very Christian, Gentile point of reconstruction of the biblical charts, maps, and reconstructions. And like I said, the research in here is good. All of the names, the proper nouns, have been changed to protect the innocent. Why? I don't know. I don't know why. So this book gives you lots of information about different times of history, the different books that we have today, and it goes in when it, it talks about the law, and in parenthesis it says Torah, and then it gives you all of the chart of the canon that we have that was approved at the Nicene Council. These rocks are very untumperful on my buttocks. So, this has some rudimentary timelines. It also has some uh, uh, chronologies of the uh, conquests of uh, Joshua, or Joshua, son of Nun, who was the, uh, the uh, uh, appointed one after Moshe, and led the uh, nation of Israel, those 12 tribes, back into the land of, land of Canaan, and it became the land of Israel those uh, Canaanites and those in Jericho were so not human, they were perverted by other mighty ones, and we'll just leave it at that. So what I've done is really diligently studied through these books, and then also places like Wikipedia, Google, uh, the dictionaries, the encyclopedias that are in line. And I will type in words like G-O-D and shake my head and go, oh my goodness. And if you type in Yahweh, Y-H-A, Y-A-H, Y, you, you get a perversion of the, the names. So what I've searched out diligently is the name, and it's been perverted. The name has been perverted in this book. The name has been perverted. It has changed. It's a counterfeit, a masquerade in most every Bible and most every biblical uh, scholarly work because they did not know Yahweh, they were serving the other one, this G-O-D, the Gimel and the Dalit in the Hebrew and the Paleolithic means the goat deity 
or the ga, which is a twisted wick, and that was erased at the time of Moshe, and then the dalit, which is a, a door, or a door of a tent that you bob in and out. So it is a, a crooked entrance. And if we look into the Paleolithic Hebrew of what it really is that everybody is worshiping, and you get definitions of G-O-D in here, but if the scriptures say, I am yud Vavhe, vav he Yahweh, this is my name for all generations. There are no others beside me. Have no other names of any other mighty ones. So, I want you to realize, I realize, that when I study outside sources on things like stuff that we're not supposed to study, we'll go through some of these. Here is Arabian mythology, Allah, and uh, re references to his three daughters. Here we have a study of B-A-apostrophe-A-L, Baal, or Bel. It is a title, it is not a name. It is Belit in the feminine form. You have the Greek Belos, a sun god. You have Baal, which means horrific. Semitic title. Definition, translated Lord, which means bows to another. Baal, Hadad, or a uh, god of thunderstorms, which is a fertility and agricultural deity. You have the word L-O-R-D over the assembly of gods, meaning husband or owner verb to take position. Okay, many gods, goddesses, bore the title Baal or Baalim, Baalet. Okay, and we can go on. It goes into El and Dagon and Baal Hammon. Now, forgive me, you listeners, and forgive me, Father, for even mentioning the names of these other mighty ones. But this generation does not know that they are worshiping the one that was in the garden that took the scepter from Adam and subjected mankind into slavery. That's the reason that the Messiah came. And it says, do not bring my name to naught. Let me introduce you to Yahshua. He was the incarnate Torah. He lived every, every commandment, mitzvot, all 613 that applied to him perfectly. He said, I come in my Father's name, yet you don't receive me. Another comes in his own name, yet him you will receive. Who is it that they've received? In the book of Revelation, it says, all the nations shall go whoring after the beast. I'm not of all the nations any longer. I belong to the Messiah, Yahweh Yeshua, who was crucified on a pagan altar of Mithra, a cross. And yes, he bled for me. And that blood is taken in vain if it is not attached to his name, you cannot change his name to the name of another. And who is that name that we have today? The J-E-S-U-S. -S. We've discussed, and you can see in many of these reference books, that in about the 1500s, the J, the letter J was added to all of the languages. A J sound. Why? It was to propagate a lie. 
They changed the name, the Hashem, Yahweh Elohim, to L-O-R-D-G-O-D. That is not Yahweh. That is the deceiver. That is the opponent. That is the adversary of Yahweh, who is cast down to these rocks. This is his prison, and we live on the outside of the earth. And all of the world governments and religions and militaries are controlled by anybody in any other name of their deity other than Yahweh and his Messiah, Yahshua. Come on over, guys. We're honking it up. My leg is asleep, by the way, and uh, uh, I, when I get up, I, I'm afraid I may have some pebble stuff. So, uh-oh, we got a, a, a dog chasing uh, some gooses there. That was exciting. Uh, yeah, it's very asleep. Oh, this could be fun. Uh-oh. Oh. Oh, goodness. Yeah, it's like... It feels like a stump. So, remember, get into your word. We have links to all of these books that you can buy in our bookstore. And shalom. Have a wonderful week and counting of the homers. Don't to Shavuot, which is a full, like we said, lunar eclipse on Pentecost. And then next fall at the feasts, we have another full lunar eclipse. So that will be the fourth. So we have some very exciting times and news. Stay tuned and subscribe to our casts. And Yivareka Yahweh Vishmareka. Ya er Yahweh Panavaleka Vihuneka Vyasemlaha Shalom Ow this very sleep Whew I just fell